An emergency warning sounded at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in northern Ukraine just over 35 years ago, and workers watched in horror as the control screen signaled a huge meltdown. A reactor overheated, resulting in a blast the size of 500 nuclear bombs, and the incident has left an indelible mark on animals, plants and even humans, some for the worse, but amazingly, others for the better. What about the rest? Well, you'll have to see for yourself. But before we get started, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Radioactive Cows People are still frequently exposed to radiation when ingesting locally produced basic goods, including milk, more than 35 years after the Chernobyl tragedy. Scientists analyzed cow's milk from private farms and houses roughly 120 miles from the Chernobyl disaster region in Ukraine. The radiation levels in the milk these cows produced were five times higher than the legal limit for adults and more than 12 times higher for youngsters. The civilian population has been living in this zone for years, and during that time these people have developed their own regular lives and maintained a full-fledged economy and cows were the most common livestock that self-settlers kept in their farms. Plus, the radioactive cows gradually began to run wild, ensuring that dairy is readily available if they need it. And if imported food isn't making it into the region, they may not have a choice. According to the researchers, certain modest preventative measures may be implemented at a cost of approximately $20 per person per year for the 8,300 individuals living in the six villages with the greatest levels of pollution. Atomic Vodka The first consumer product to come from the abandoned territory around the destroyed nuclear power station is artisanal vodka made with grain and water from the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Would you drink vodka contaminated by a nuclear disaster? The powerful spirit is known as Atomic and it does not glow green. That's the very least we'd expect from a bottle that costs around 65 bucks. Although the fruit used in the process is somewhat radioactive, the resultant spirit is perfectly safe to consume. The spirit, according to its inventors, is part of a four-year experiment by experts to determine whether they could develop a product safe to eat from crops produced in a polluted region following the nuclear tragedy of 1986. They got the apples from a farmer in the 18-mile exclusion zone's outer ring, where radioactive contamination is the greatest, and public access and inhabitation are limited. Around 10,000 people still remain in the outside zone, and experts believe that farming, which is still illegal there, can help the community regain some stability. The vodka was primarily meant to call attention to the scientists' tireless efforts to revive the economy in the Chernobyl region, where they had spent years examining how the landscape had recovered. Haunted Amusement Park Take a look at this deserted amusement park in Pripyat, Ukraine. It was supposed to open in May 1986, just in time for the May Day celebrations, but the Chernobyl accident, which happened just a few kilometers away, halted those plans. Drone footage reveals exactly how spooky this location is now. Festive decorations linger near the haunted rides in anticipation of a May opening that never materialized. In any event, the park, particularly its Ferris wheel, has become a symbol of the Chernobyl tragedy, with visitors leaving stuffed animals in the park's vehicles as a tribute. The radiation levels under the Ferris wheel are among the highest in the amusement park. There's also an abandoned bumper car ride, with most of the rides remaining in working order. According to many stories, the park was only open for a short period before the accident. There is film and photographs depicting the amusement park in operation, and there are even claims that the park was rapidly opened after the tragedy before the city was evacuated. However, it's more plausible and widely assumed that the video was shot in the winter as a test. Football Stadium Before the Chernobyl accident in 1986, this stadium hosted one of Ukraine's biggest football clubs, or soccer to our North American viewers. Welcome to Avonhard Stadium, a 5,000-seat stadium a few hundred yards from the now iconic abandoned amusement park. The sports club that played there was created in the mid-1970s and was mostly made up of players from the surrounding communities. However, it ceased operations at the end of the 1988 season, and this is how it now appears. Back in the day, rows of decaying wooden chairs flanked the concrete stand that led up to the remains of the covered press box. 
Pripyat was a vibrant metropolis. The average age of the 50,000 or so people that lived here was roughly 26 years old, and nuclear power was at the forefront of contemporary technology. The city was designed to be one of the most popular in the former Soviet Union, with a focus on youth. There were nightclubs, swimming pools, pubs and romantic cafes with views of a lake. There was also this long-forgotten football stadium. In terms of the team, they enjoyed their greatest season in 1985, finishing second and looking well for promotion to the Soviet League's upper echelons. There aren't many places in Chernobyl that show such a remarkable restoration of nature as this one. Room filled with gas masks Before the first deployment of modern chemical weapons in 1915, when German forces used chlorine gas to fight the French, inventions were being produced to help and safeguard the capacity to breathe in the midst of gas smoke or other dangerous vapors. And these latest photos demonstrate how nature is recovering an abandoned town years after the Chernobyl nuclear tragedy. The graphic images depict what's left of Chernobyl's villages, with gas masks strewn about and pets abandoned in a daycare facility. This middle school is one of five secondary schools in the area. It's home to Pripyat's most photographed collection of gas masks. The school was modern and well-equipped with music and sports facilities while it was in operation. The child-sized masks would have been kept on site during the Cold War era and were designed to protect against nuclear, biological and chemical attacks. They were never more needed than in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, and now hundreds of them lie strewn across the floor, a reminder of the hundreds of children who once ran through the corridors. Stubborn Grandmas Scientists estimate that the Chernobyl nuclear power plant explosion spilled as much radioactive material into the environment as 400 atomic bombs, and more than a thousand square miles of land around Chernobyl is technically uninhabitable today. A radioactive hot zone for thousands of years, it wiped off all the vegetation and creatures in the area, but not these babushkas, which is Ukrainian for grandmother. On its poisonous ground, a tenacious group of women continues to claw out a life. They're the last of over a thousand primarily elderly ladies who returned to the exclusion zone in the days and weeks following the accident. The babushkas, like everyone else, were evacuated and relocated to high-rise apartment complexes in Kiev, Ukraine's capital, and abroad, isolated from all that was meaningful to them. Many have since died, but there is evidence that the woman who stayed in the exclusion zone outlived their neighbours who left, and they claim that happiness is one of the reasons for this. Why? Of course, it's far from a utopia for the elderly folks, and this is ultimately a survival story. Fully Operational Canteen Congratulations on your decision to take a one-of-a-kind amazing journey to Chernobyl. But where will you dine and what will you consume throughout your trip? Why not attempt a canteen on an atomic power plant? This establishment appears to provide everything you'll need for a good dining experience. The most popular dining hall in the restricted zone serves substantial Eastern European cuisine. Start with the national Ukrainian cuisine of beetroot and cabbage soup, followed by the main course of porridge potatoes or spaghetti and a patty cake. Instead of beef, how about a piece of delectable, juicy fish? If you're a vegetarian, don't worry, there are alternatives for you as well. Try the traditional Ukrainian drink Kompo made from dried fruit if you're thirsty, here are some brunch alternatives for those of you who enjoy it. Breakfast consists of scrambled eggs, pancakes and milk porridge. Want something to drink? You'll find everything you need. Tea, coffee, juice and more. The good news for health-conscious eaters is that everything is cooked according to traditional Ukrainian methods. All of the meals are produced with locally sourced eco-friendly ingredients. This canteen has chosen foods that will give you the energy you need to complete the objective. Killing Machine this polluted storage location is just southwest of Pripyat, well known as the radiation hotspot. The majority of the vehicles were transported to suitable radioactive waste storage years ago, but certain artifacts such as this digger claw from the reactor's inventory remain. Experts worry that the killer machine used in the Chernobyl cleanup is still sitting abandoned in a forest, and that it is so radioactive that even a single touch may kill you. Between the woods lies an item that both frightens and draws travelers. The claw was employed to decontaminate the area. It was involved in cleaning up the roof of the destroyed unit, either from concrete or uranium and graphite debris, according to various statistics. The bucket was placed there when the effort to clean up the Chernobyl plant's yard was completed, and it's still there. 
It's unclear why the bucket was abandoned in the midst of the jungle. The bucket was most likely left in position and forgotten about in a hurry. However, as a result of this, the claw of death has become a fascinating exhibit that's always included in the visits here. Despite the higher radiation exposure, approaching the bucket itself is not risky. The world's most radioactive forest A steam explosion and subsequent fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power station just after midnight on April 26, 1986, resulted in the single largest uncontrolled environmental release of radiation that felt like a walk in the adjacent woodland. Welcome to the Wormwood Forest, which is located immediately west of the factory. The Pine Forest region sustained the most severe fallout damage, with radiation levels so high that many of the trees perished instantaneously, turning a rustic brilliant orange. The stunning color diversity has given the area the moniker the Red Forest. The core sprayed radiation like a sprinkler closer to the ground, changing direction with the wind and polluting sections of land surrounding the reactor. Surprisingly, trees have a radiation threshold, but how severe was the dose? It's quite awful. The crimson woodland is situated in an alienation zone. In the subsequent clouds of smoke and dust, which were extensively contaminated with radioactive pollution, this area got the greatest dosages of radiation. The disaster has had a significant impact on the Red Forest's flora and wildlife. However, it appears that the Red Forest's biodiversity has risen in the years since the calamity. Due to a dramatic reduction in human effect, the area's natural environment appears to have not only survived, but thrived. Obsessive Stalkers A yellow souvenir truck offers t-shirts, key rings and glow-in-the-dark Chernobyl condoms near the entrance to the Chernobyl exclusion zone in Ukraine, all of which are labelled with gas mask insignia or stylized radiation warning signs. They sell coffee and hot dogs. There's also Chernobyl ice cream. But that's because the accident has been turned into a tourist attraction. Stalkers has become the word for people who have turned the zone into a business. They arrive at a community that was evacuated but not buried in the catastrophe zone, unlike many others. They struggle through decades of old rubbish recollections of existence, measuring the levels as they go. One tourist describes it as a time capsule. This location, however, fascinates individuals all around the world, not only stalkers. This location recently received a record amount of 124,000 visitors, indicating a rapid Chernobyl tourism boom. Add to that, the stalker legend was updated for the digital age in 2007, when a group of young Ukrainian designers released a post-apocalyptic first-person shooter video game set in the Chernobyl exclusion zone called Stalker, an acronym for scavengers, trespassers, adventurers, loners, killers, explorers and robbers. Pripyat Abandoned Hospital There used to be 50,000 people living here, but today it's a ghost town, and there's no better spot to witness that than the Pripyat City Hospital. It used to be a bustling hospital on the outskirts of town. Health of the nation, the country's riches, says the sign on the hospital's roof. There were 410 beds at the hospital. The clinics and outpatient facilities are housed in a series of linked structures a dentistry clinic, a mortuary, a maternity unit, and an infectious illness ward. It was here that many firefighters and personnel were treated the night of the Chernobyl incident at the adjacent nuclear power facility. Their clothing is still in the hospital basement, contaminated and unable to be transferred. There were tools, medical gadgets, and paperwork strewn throughout the place. Days after the catastrophe, the hospital was abandoned. Working in a setting with so much radiation inside was no longer conceivable. Everything was put down the basement, including firefighters' uniforms, victims' outerwear, and the bed linen on which they were laying, because they were full of radioactive particles, making it harmful for both the people who arrived at the hospital and medical professionals. The amount of radiation is quite high here, and it's considered the most hazardous location in Pripyat. The Spooky Catfish The Chernobyl exclusion zone is supposed to be home to two-headed wolves, giant snakes, and other monsters. Radiation without a doubt has an impact on the plants and animals that dwell in polluted regions. How can we be sure that the enormous contaminated fish in the Chernobyl nuclear cooling pond aren't mutants? Catfish from the cooling pond at the catastrophe site are one of the most well-known creatures. They are massive, yet they're not river monsters. They don't have any predators and they're fed by visitors on a regular basis. That is why they may develop to such large proportions. These waterways support a diverse range of fish populations, not just catfish. 
The cooling pond is essentially a natural reserve. Workers here tried all they could to cool down the reactor in the hours following the disaster. Later, they had to pump radioactive water into the cooling pond from the power plant's building. The power plant has been decommissioned for more than 35 years, but the cooling pond has not. Representatives of flora and wildlife living in the reservoir are harmed by radioactive materials. As a result, Chernobyl catfish can be classified as both radioactive and mutant. Creatures with Mutations This shocking footage of a headless deer roaming across Chernobyl that has gone viral is only the top of the radioactive iceberg. Since the disaster, the area in Ukraine has had one of the biggest unintended radiation releases in history. The animals that live near the catastrophe allow us to investigate the impacts of radiation as well as the disaster's rehabilitation. The majority of domestic animals had relocated away from the disaster, and the malformed farm animals that were born did not breed, so scientists concentrated their efforts on researching wild creatures and pets that remained. The outcomes are startling. Following the disaster, there was an upsurge in genetic defects among farm animals. Around 400 malformed animals were born in 1990. The majority of the malformations were severe enough that the animals barely lived for a few hours. Face abnormalities and additional appendages were among the anomalies, as were aberrant coloration and shrinking stature. Domestic animal abnormalities were most widespread in cattle and pigs. Like the headless deer, animals and vegetation have now recovered and fully returned to the territory. Is Chernobyl the newest must-visit place on your list? It's a fascinating location. But maybe these videos have given you some insight into what life is like in such a perilous environment. Before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe.